All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I am your host, Cardinalis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everybody. And we just got back from Vegas with some good news that Andrew Yang hath made yet another qualifying poll. And funny enough, his ideas are rubbing off on the other candidates that were at the Nevada first in the West rally, especially one Elizabeth Warren, who was actually cozied up to the idea of universal basic in income as opposed to a uh, cronyist tyrancy. Cody, what's going on? All right, cool. So, yeah, so basically, uh, over the weekend, a lot went down in Las Vegas for Andrew Yang. Well, I guess not even only in Las Vegas, only on the West Coast in general. Uh, on Saturday, he had a really big showing. I believe there was a Univision and DNC forum. I remember there was some drama because I believe Elizabeth Warren was not there. But then, yeah, we saw him at a rally in Las Vegas last night. And then once again, at their first in the West Center. And on top of that, new poll comes out all the way over in South Carolina, another important voting early voting state that has Andrew Yang at 4%, which will count for the December debate. So that's kind of the news for today. That was a big story. Um, this is coming off the back of, we'll probably do another story more on that in a day or so. Coming on the back of the MSNBC debacle, obviously the poll wasn't influenced by it, but just the, the Yang news that came out where MSNBC omitted Yang once again from another poll thing. We'll get into that another day. However, so it did qualify for, he did qualify for one more of these polls. He's now one more qualifying poll away. Uh, and... I want to go back and show you guys uh, the person who tweeted this out, Zach Montalero. He actually puts together this very nice graph you can take a look at. And you'll see right here that while Andrew Yang is one poll away, he's also had a lot of polls very, very close in that three to four range. And though, the dangerous thing is the the uh, the more recent polls are at the bottom here. You'll notice these more recent polls at the bottom had been tracking down for a while. Now, realistically, what this comes from is the CBS News Battleground Tracker slash YouGov poll. He got really really hit hard in okay uh, i'm not sure why exactly but for whatever reason got killed in these polls i absolutely railroaded but it seems to be quinnipiac came out he's recovering and we're still in the period where we're going to see where that new hampshire money and that money he put into iowa for ad buys if that's going to pan out so that's one angle of it um again it's with south carolina i think a south a four percent of south carolina is really just more in reflective of all these threes. He could have easily been a four. You know what I mean? Like, he's been close in a lot of these polls. I think this has been just getting over the edge a little bit more. Okay. So... Now, I know reading into the poll, you noticed a couple interesting things in there. Yeah. There, there always is some stuff, because, you know, we're dealing with kind of small numbers across all these polls, like a thousand or so people, right? Yeah, so it was small, but not insanely small. And, and I started looking at this, and I thought it was very, very interesting. Because, and and what first caught my eye, we'll just get this stat out of the way, and I, I really don't know exactly oh, how... Oh, 768 to, voters, I apologize, smaller than I thought. Yeah, but but it's a lot better. I mean, we've done some of these polls that have had like 485 people or something, yeah, and the well, margin I mean, of error is like 7%. Not preferable. Yeah, but generally, you they usually do about 1,001, 1,002, so they can say they had a four-figure sample. That That's probably the vast majority of these polls that we look at have about 1,000 people sampled, so that you can start really trusting the little slices that they take out of the pie and you can get that margin of error um, a lot lower. So, so this one had about three quarters of that, okay, which is, which is pretty good. Um, but what's interesting is of all the people, Yang got his 4%, you mentioned that. However, that um, the people that classified themselves as very liberal supporting him was only three and the somewhat's were 10 while the conservatives were two uh two percent so what's interesting is he had one of the highest numbers of moderates because for example warren it was 28 percent very liberal 23 percent somewhat and then with sanders it was 20 percent very and 10 percent sub somewhat and with biden it was exactly 28 and 28 so he was actually one of the only candidates that statistically was more moderate by a significant margin. Even Cory Booker was two and two. Um, it's not until you get into Klobuchar that there's like 0% vary and 1% somewhat, but that's probably because it was like 0.8 to 0.9 or something like that, you know? So it, it was really interesting that Andrew Yang was by far the most moderate, as we could say, uh, candidate. And then also... Him and Bernie Sanders were the only ones that were ratioed in favor of people that actually, uh, white people that didn't have a degree. Now, now it, what's so interesting is what, 
That's such a weird stat to include as like the caboose on the train. I don't know, it's like a really random uh, like group of people. Like you're just picking a group of people. Like, like this one group of people. Yeah. <laughs> White college degrees. Like okay, I don't like anyone else. Yeah. For, forget the 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 Indians or the Asians or the African Americans with college degrees. But oh, those white people with college degrees got to watch out. Well, for them. but yeah, it's like just picking one group of people anyway. And that so so anyway, what was interesting though is that. Biden, the people that said yes to him versus the people that said, I'm um, sorry, the people that said yes to having a degree versus no to having a degree, it was almost perfectly split. It was actually, it was perfectly split 22 and 22%. With Sanders, however, 8% did have a college degree, while 14% did not. So he actually had more support amongst those without college degrees. All the others, it was higher support for people with college degrees. With Harris, it was two to one. Well, with the, Warren, the, the funny ones, Buttigieg, right? Like, of course, Buttigieg yeah. would just be like the white with college, his seven like, languages. College degrees. Yeah. Like, that, but, but hold on. Well, Warren you, was yeah. eighteen to sixteen, and you say Buttigieg. I just want to get the exact stats. Was fourteen to nine, but Yang was only three to ten. So not only was he was ratioed, but he was ratioed by three and a half percent. Well, just, I mean, but again, though, what? It's one of those just weird stats where it's like, what does it even mean? Well, then? it makes me think normal people but, like Andrew Yang more because more moderates okay. and more average Joes that may not have gone That's to Harvard. Very like good point. Him. That's a very good point. I think I think when you do kind of look at the combination of it's mostly moderates who aren't more, you know, high. Because this would be you, Cody. You're not a very liberal person and you don't have a degree from Harvard or CSUN. You probably did some college and whatnot, but you'd, Wait, you don't have Hold a on. Are you trying to tell me that I would be a Yang fan? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Look, this on, analysis runs deep, all right? <laughs> no, hold on. There is some other kind of funny stuff in here. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll have the links. You guys can go all the way through all of it. Um, however, there's one more thing I want to go kind of back and reference. Some of you guys might have caught it earlier, and I, it is worth mentioning because something else happened during this poll today. Because I'm going to go through some my polls come out every day. This one obviously was a qualifying poll for Yang. That's good. However, I don't know what you think about this, man, but um, this also means that Tom Steyer now has hit four qualifying polls for the December Jeez. debate. So Tom Steyer will be at the... Well, I believe he still has to hit a um, fundraising What do you think of the people threshold. that were cheering for him? How well, authentic did that I, seem? I guess I, uh, <laughs> we, we, we just got back, like you said, we just got back from Las Vegas where they had the first in the West Center, and there actually was a section of Tom Steyer fans uh, that came in with a signs. A big section. And everything, and they were all about, you know, Tom Steyer. Um, he played to, when he went to speak. It was pretty funny. When he went to speak, it was later in the event, and the they mostly cleared out of the hall. Which, by the way, I don't know why they always do these events this way, where they have it set up where the speakers are. Where like the last third of the speakers speak to nobody, but whatever. Yeah, he was basically turned and just standing like this, speaking directly to the part of the auditorium with the uh, Tom Steyer fans. It was weird, but I don't know, man. They're out there supporting their guy, maybe. Maybe very susceptible to television, you know? You just see a couple of ads and you're like, wow, wow, that Tom Steyer guy, he's my man. I don't know. Don't know. However. I know exactly what I it think. It is interesting <laughs> to see, though, that Tom Steyer has, because the bigger thing that shows me, and the reason why I'm interested it's in this. It's paying off. It's crazy. Well, no, but remember, Andrew Yang has finally started getting into ad buys. Steyer's been doing them for a while. I think Tom Steyer's proof they work. Like you Tom know, Steyer's running on Tom Steyer's you and you know if you want to know what Tom Steyer's message is what he told what he told us in the building last night that he's actually running on Tom Steyer last night told us he is running basically climate change climate change climate change says day one is going to declare a state of emergency to handle climate change now say what you want about that I'm just saying that is what he's offering people and I will say is there anything that is like speaks more to like have like is there any more like billionaire platform like the economy healthcare jobs education you guys worry about that stuff no, no. man I'm a, <laughs> I'm a billionaire I don't worry about any of this stuff I I worry I only worry about one I do think yeah. it's a little bit it did show a little bit of kind of like he is maybe though he's that candidate if you are the person who is just well off enough where you don't really care about the economy or healthcare or you know education or a lot of stuff because you're just Things are pretty good for you, and all you care about is the environment. I guess that was the Tom Steyer angle, but it also seems to be motive or moving him ahead of you know a lot. Of Andrew Yang, for example, is not at the polls now. Andrew Yang is blown past the fundraising levels, I believe, and Steyer's yet to hit them. Um, I believe, yeah, I, this is the source right here. Uh, Zach Montalero says that speaking with the staffer, um, the from the campaign, they said they firmly believe to track on to 
hit the fundraising goal. But Thomas Dyer will be there in December. I'm going back to the thing, I'm almost positive Andrew Yang will be there in December as well. Uh, again, I'll go back and show you guys the uh, show you guys the um, spreadsheet here, and you can see that Andrew Yang is very, very, very close. I mean, there's a lot of threes that could have easily been a four. Again, you could say a lot of threes that could have been twos, right? But yeah. point being, he's polling around where he needs to poll, and he has been for a while. The odds that these TV buys in New Han in Iowa tick him up one percent and one Paul's all he needs. So. so how many more does he need now? Oh, just one. Yeah, I was about to say I think it was three out of four. This is yeah. a four yeah. four percent. Uh, again, look yeah. at Tom Steyer, man. Including two five percent. I can't, I can't look at that Tom Steyer thing. My heart breaks. D don't you remember uh you were telling me a story once where there was that terrorist leader um where they I don't remember the exact uh, scenario, but a group of terrorists had uh, tried to destroy something of of a Saudi prince or hijack his plane or his car or something and then the Saudi prince just like bought them off <laughs> you know what I'm saying and the guy went back to his terrorist leader and says I have yet to meet a man that can say no to Saudi money more or less you know yeah it was it was a story like that and I just kind of think are we really that purchasable like I, I knew money had power you know what I'm saying and and I know that time is money and it is a powerful tool but I, I, I don't know there. I guess there's an idealistic part of me that just hopes it's not all powerful and you literally cannot just buy your way into a serious consideration for president. I, I don't know. I will just lose all faith. Well, also in the if, system, <laughs> if, you, if you remember Tom Steyer on the debate stage last month, it really did seem like a guy who was just kind of like happy to be there. Really? Like, ah, yeah. cool. I'm, he didn't say a whole lot. He didn't really seem too bothered by the fact he didn't say a whole lot. And there, there was no, there was no let Steyer speak, you know, movement. Like he, he didn't come out and say, it's an outrage. Why was it ask more questions? Like he seemed pretty content with basically not talking at all. So that is interesting. Um, you also brought up another story I wanted to highlight. This also happened over the weekend. Um, now, it's a pretty long article here. I don't want to go all the way through but I do want to bring this, to, bring this up to you guys. And that is the fact that Elizabeth Warren says that Yang-backed universal basic income is among options to consider to ensure American financial well-being. Now, first thing I want to say before we move any further on this is this sounds like, to me, the ultimate cop-out from a candidate with a campaign that is not... I'll show you guys where the campaign's headed. It's not, it's not, yeah. things aren't perfect for Warren. I mean, like, we were just at a big event with a lot of Democrats, and it did not seem like the Warren crowd really had, was moving the room, so to speak. It, she didn't come out there and give a really great speech. She came out and gave a really weird speech. It's not going great for her. So the fact that a, an idea that's rising in popularity is now on the table makes sense when your yeah. campaign isn't <laughs> killing it, where it's like, eh, like, you know what? Maybe this is a uh, bit. Yeah. Op well, recently she came out. A lot of Medicare for all criticisms were in the, were in the air. We're in the um, conversation. She comes out and, and says, "Well, once we get to year three of my presidency, I will begin like a Medicare." It's like uh -huh. we just three. What are we? What, <laughs> what are we like, waiting but for? But again, it's like she seems very, very, very open to kind of backtracking. However, I'll go through and say what she said. So, Senator Senator Elizabeth Warren said she was open for, to. Pushing for universal basic income in a Washington Post survey published on Saturday, calling it among the options to consider to ensure the financial well-being of Americans. We absolutely must raise wages and strengthen the social safety net so that every American has basic financial security, universal basic income, and universal living, living wages are options to consider. Now, I do want to talk more about this because it's a lot of times people conflate giving somebody money as what UBI is. Like if yeah, the government so say, gives you money, it's UBI. And so, you know what makes UBI UBI is kind of the first word, which is universal, and that's what kind of makes it interesting. It takes away yeah. a lot of the, takes away a lot of the kind of an, shenanigans. An unmeans tested, unconditional payout. Yes, because the difference between that and when you talk about, um, where she talks later on here about um, a universal living wage, a little bit different. Universal living wage, you could argue, is a fifteen dollar, fifteen dollar with the fighter fifteen. Whatever, and there's more. It, it just it, it's kind of two different opposing viewpoints. Again, I think she's just saying things that sound popular. That this just sounds like someone saying things that sound popular. Yeah, part of me is happy because it, it, this is if if the if Andrew Yang did nothing other than push the Overton women window towards a, a talk on universal basic basic income that hopefully 
uh, was pushed far enough the Republicans started talking about it, I would be overjoyed. So there's part of me that thinks, well, it's great that this is the conversation that we're having now instead of federal jobs guarantee. It's great that this is the conversation we're having now instead of tax the wealthy. The millionaires and the billionaires. Actually, he doesn't even say millionaires anymore since he became a millionaire. It really, I, I love it that Buttigieg ripped off his idea and is speaking about universal basic income in the, uh, the fourth industrial revolution. I love that Biden has talked about the fourth industrial revolution. I love that now even Elizabeth Warren is talking about it. I love that that Overton window has been pushed and that is 100%, literally 100%, except for maybe Scott Santon's also, you know, a product of the work and the effort of one Andrew Yang, okay? But at the same time, I don't trust any of those other people uh, to be in control of universal basic income because then it becomes mean tested, then it becomes cronious, then it gets corrupted, then it becomes a way of you know diverting funds from universal basic income into the general fund so their pork barrel projects can get funded and their corporate friends that give them donations while all of a sudden all this extra money. And, and, and how do we preserve the purity of this really great saving um, economic practice from the corruption that is Elizabeth Warren. I mean, do we really feel comfortable giving what could save who knows how many suicides, how much stress, how much divorce, how much anxiety, how much pain in our society? Do we want to put that system in the hands of somebody who is such a grifter she would lie about her ethnicity and receive awards on behalf of persecuted peoples, okay, in order just to get a leg up into an Ivy League college. Like, I mean, if you're willing to lie for 20 years straight and perpetuate that lie just to get into college, do, do I want to give you control over basically the economy for two thirds of the people in the United States of America, uh, in the most influential country in the world. No, I don't. So anyway, um, let us know what you guys think. Uh, it was great seeing a lot of the Yang gang. It was great actually meeting with you guys, taking pictures, going to Vegas. We'll, we will hopefully be there again. I do believe we receive details tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken on some poker events that Andrew Yang is going to be attending. Am I correct, Cody? We may be there again. I'm not sure. You're not sure. Okay. Well, we're going to get those details. We'd love to if we could. Cody has no problems with going back to Las Vegas. So anyway, um, we'll let you guys know a little bit more tomorrow. But please comment. Let us know what you think. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, please subscribe. Like this video if you can. If you want to contribute to our channel, there's a PayPal link in the, in the description. And make sure you hang out with us on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays. We will be live streaming again in early December. Or before then, we might just start our second channel for streaming. Also, make sure that um, if you can, leave us a voicemail at 1-833-PSP-RADIO. And we'll get back to you. This is Problem Solver Politics. We'll see you guys in the next video.